Hey folks, brought back whenever I plays and we are going to expand a little bit Fisherman Up Tamer because this is Atari Blast. This literally came out last week and is written by a duo of Paul Lay and Harvey Kong Tin and is basically one of these ones if you follow follow stuff in the Atari um, community that it sort of has a bit of building up over a number of years, it's sort of like hype. So I'm going to boost up. This is actually available for both the you know the 8-bit computer line and the 5200. Um, the 5200 version you can only play on real hardware with an SD cartridge. 5200s weren't in PAL regions, so I don't know much more about that. And plus those game those joysticks, I don't think they work well. Anyway, there's not much plot to this, so you've basically got uh, as they drew the art, or it randomizes the color a bit. Your auto fire mode, your difficulty, I'll play it on normal, and go. So you got your level name there. First thing to note with that, it's pretty simple. Um, you, you, you notice the border, it flashes between, depending on the stage, it's green or red. If it's green, like this stage, you're you're safe from the obstacles. Um, so one of the interesting and weird things with this game is simply just a lot of the, the, the level things. So we're coming up to it, one of those points now. The screen scroll, and your idea there is you it's hard to explain, but basically, when it scrolls, you have to destroy all the hidden sections of the screen. You get a point bonus before it, it resumes scrolling. Excellent. So the idea is you've got one life, and if you have a look at the bottom of the screen, you can see there's there's two bars. Um, the S bar is your shield, and the D bar is your, is your damage. Excellent. Just upgrade to lasers. Um, as you take hits, uh, your shields will drain, but you also incur a bit of damage. When either bar drains completely, um, you're, it's game over. And really, the goal is to just shoot through, shoot your way through all the stages. There's 15 of them. And so this game, like Space Harrier, which I looked at a few months ago, was written for the uh, Atari Max flash cartridges, or emulation that could support that, or any of the other carts that can handle those format ROM images. Excellent, just increase the shields. There we go. And so it is a little tricky to run on real hardware unless you actually have one of those cartridges. Um, which is one of the reasons I wanted to, to, to sit down and take a look at it, capture it properly off, off a real computer, off a real power machine, and have a play. Alright, excellent. Hearts give you both shields and damage back. Um, you can get a little shield icon to just boost the shields, or you can get a um, a spanner icon to just repair damage. Now coming up to the end of the first stage, and here's the first boss. And he's not in ridiculously complicated. He just you just got to just time it so your shots can get past his his rain of fire. And while it's going, I'll just quickly cover the score panel. So. Obviously, you've got your score at the far left. Uh, then you've got your shield and damage bars, um, which flash momentarily red as you get hit. And C and I is related to... Um, that's related to, like, uh, cloak and invulnerability. Now the boss is gone, I get to collect... I get to try and repair myself up to max. Sort of like the, the flood of... bonus points and, and stuff here. Anyway. So you're just trying to rack up as many bonus pickups as you get before the next stage kicks in. And you got your blast code, which really acts like a, a level password. I haven't really played around with it much, but... Now you can see, red border, level 2 is hazardous for obstacles. So... And a couple of new weapons that get introduced here, but... So, we'll talk about the weapons. Um, so you've got you start off with your, your basic your basic missiles. You collect um, P, you get photons, which change between the two stages. Oops, hit something. That's a bomb, a smart bomb, I should say. And you wear as I said, your weapons are timed at time, so you can't keep them going forever. You can see the bar there just draining as they're as being used. That's a cloak which stops enemies firing at you, thankfully. 
I got uh, photons again. Which are far more useful in the vertical stages. I really like that. I, I really like that there is this um, switch between stages that are set up for vertical vertical fights and horizontal ones. It just adds something different to the mix, because I can't think of many stages, many games that did it. I mean, Salamander famously does. Um, Dominator, which is one I really have to get a hold of on the 64, does as well. I'm doing a lot better this run. I, mean, I remember seeing videos of this as they were developing it, some of the early, earlier test videos and whatnot, and it was pretty impressed. And then, like, out of the blue, um, I was just reading the Atari H forums, which is, ooh, which is where the release announcement was made. And it's like, yeah, it's now out for the 5200. I thought, what? And then, doing a little dig up, I was like, oh, it's also on the 8, it's also, the 8-bit version is out. Good. And I'm very, very happy with that. So, I'm kind of glad I order enough Atari Max carts when I do my order to, as, as prep for Space Harrier's review. Um, basically, if you, can run, if you can run the card of Space Harrier, you'll be able to run the card of this. It's also a 8 megabit, 8 megabit cartridge. Uh, I'm not sure on the sp spec of machine you need to run it. Um, I, I don't know if if you can get away with like an unexpanded 600XL or something. Um, the documentation that comes with is it really clear? Um, which is a which is a bit of a pain. Um, I guess you could really only mess about from the emulation and configure models. I mean, my normal uh, Atari 800 Mac X setup is usually uh, a PAL. Uh, pretty much what I actually have here: PAL 800 XL, so 64K and whatnot. Ooh, okay, that's not good. We're getting a bit critical damage-wise, and you can sort of see as you get as you get critical. You start, it starts getting tougher to control, so I might have to keep quiet a bit. But thankfully, this is the end of the stage. And we get it easier. Oh, thankfully, stage three is just an overhead one. And I like this, I like this, I like this detail, the, just the variety of, 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 of graphics. You know, I mean, Yes, this would not. This is a game that could this have been possible in the eighties? I'm not sure. Just because of the amount of, of graphic data that's there, I'm really gonna try and find some some energy because because I'm like I did because I'm my ship is flying at normal speed again. Huzzah! Okay, I made it to the. F I made it, no. I don't think I've beaten this stage. One thing I do like is that the track mode is really handy and actually loops the first bit uh, of each stage, so with enough time you can eventually see bits of all the stages and all the games they riff on. Um, ooh, that's a bit of scroll speed. I mean, I know there's some Scramble and Zaxxon stuff in there, amongst others. But this is, this is, this is, this is quite an excellent game. Um, I really like what it's doing on the hardware, you know. The Atari reviews are really capable and, you know, they were always sort of hobnobbled a bit because... because they were so much more expensive and, you know, in Europe, the, because of the tape interface was so slow that they never really got a chance to shine um, with European coders. Even towards the end, it was sort of a lot of... a lot of simpler... simpler titles than what you'd... you know, you'd see on a machine like the 64. So this is really, really impressive artwork. Like it's, you know, it is with lots of colours, which you know, one of the things Atari is great at throwing about. It's nice, responsive controls. And oh crap, I'm damaged again. Um, you know, nice, responsive controls. The music is. Mm, I'm a bit indifferent on the music because it's it's basically a cover of um, the music to Flimbo's one of the tunes from Flimbo's Quest on the C64. And when I was playing this initially, it's like. Where have I heard this before? Um, I haven't really played Flimbo's that much. Uh, no, 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 I'm almost dead. So, the music, it doesn't, and I admit it doesn't really fit in with the game. And that feels a bit weird that they can go outside the, like, the background area. Tell me this. There's a heart. Oh, thank the make. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, some of these formations are brutal just in terms of like express shots. Thing is, for for what is essentially a little freeware release, and I'm, I know the devs said that they they just had to stop sort of working on it and get it get it out there. But you've got to admire them. They've slogged on this game for quite a few years and they've created something that's not necessarily groundbreaking, but is really impressive from technical from a technical standpoint. And it's actually really fun to play. Um, if you have the means to run it, you absolutely, absolutely have to go check this out. Um, because of the fact that it's only been released on Atari Ages forums, there isn't really like a homepage for it. So um, I'm going to have to leave it in the description and where you can download the cartridge images and whatnot. It's Yes, it's not as convenient as me throwing up oh, more Xevious things. Oh. No, no, no. I think I'm done for. This is this is where the shields. I don't need shields. I need health. Damn it! Cloak that helps. They stop firing. stage. I haven't made it this far, so... There's health! Oh! Damnation! This game likes to tease me. Like, I... I yeah, I think I've gotten to the stage where I'm not dead. Oh, no! Did you just see the health go off the screen? There was a health that I missed. It. I, there was a health pickup that I missed. This is, this is what excellent gaming is. Gaming is just like intense seat of the pants, seat of your pants action, freaking out that you're, you're not going to survive. And... No, and then we're almost done again. We can do this. like um, <clears throat> I didn't talk about it in the start of the game is that you can actually configure it so that your um, so that you have automatic auto firing so you don't even need to just hold the fire button it probably makes more sense on on something like the 5200 but I don't know if that would make me less less worried or not right now Not, you can't touch the boss, so they, I guess it's simple that, it, that they uh, pretty much fix the corner of the screen because oh, corner of the top. Basically, because if you touch them, it's insta kill. You've like I said earlier, you've only got a single life, which is why I've got such generous hit systems. Oh, nice! We took the boss out. Trees are on stage four. It's really, a case of just lining up to pattern. Yes, we did it. Stage four. This is as far as I've been, which is all part of the fun, right? Get as far as you can be. I have to watch these blast codes on edit later. <laughs> Ooh, Zaxxon remix, and also that means that it's gonna be. You 
you know? And Zaxxon Remix is purely horizontal. I think I dig it. I wish someone actually done a version of Zaxxon like this. Too. So far. Because you know, this game's gonna do it, it's gonna torture you when you least expect it. See, so yeah, a rule of thumb is that you always go for the power ups, you always collect those power ups, even if, you, even if it's the same weapon, because it'll refill your, your gauge and, and keep you, your, your bar going. Sorry, I've fallen a bit silent. I'm... This is as far as I've gotten, so... It's the first time I've seen this stage outside of the track demo. And, uh... Maybe I'm running out of things to say. But I'm going to keep going, because I... I'm on a good run here, and I like... You know, the experience I like when I cover a game is to, is to do that play from start to finish. I, I do dislike when people play a game and cut out the middle level. Not because they got game over, but because they just thought, eh. Like, for me, I'd rather see that. And yes, look that gap. Uh, peas are not... Peas aren't as good on the horizontal stages. And they're starting to wear me down. Damn it. Damn the, the weird pyramid things. Come on, there's got to be a heart around here somewhere. We're not critical, but we are damaged. Yeah, but in this game, that's kind of the same parlance, hey? Oh! That was shorter than I thought! Stage 5. <laughs> Ooh, Fractalus! Fractalus Mothership Series, which... Yep, it's, it's the, the ship on rescue on Fractalus. Uh, why am I blasting the ether core? The ether core are good. Why couldn't it be a jaggy ship? I mean, did the jaggy have a space fleet in Fractalus? I can't remember. I don't think so. No, no, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. Pretty good run. I mean, there's not much of a game over, but hey, 28,000 is pretty good for, you know, my third or fourth run on this. And that is Atari Blast. I hope you enjoyed this extra little bonus video for the middle of Shmup Timber. Um, I think had this not been a Shmup, I probably wouldn't have done it, at least until next month, but I thought, it's a Shmup Timber episode, it fits, and it's a brand new game, so why don't you get to, and you get two videos this week, so. Hope you enjoyed this one as always. Um, hope you enjoyed the other video this week, Tale of Beta Lyrae, which this is this sort of a good companion piece too, in its own way. Um, as always, you know, there's plenty of other videos on the channel. Thanks to everyone who subscribes, who uh, keeps track, you know, who, who likes to talk about these old games and you know enjoys enjoys seeing stuff that's a little different, a little newer. And as always, thank you again, and I'll catch you all next time.